Some mega projects changed the world. The Panama Canal, the Burj Khalifa, the Hoover Dam, engineering marvels that redefine what's possible. But not every grand vision ends in triumph. Some are so ambitious, so overhyped, and so spectacularly mismanaged that they become legendary failures, costing billions, stalling for decades, and sometimes never even opening their doors. Here at Urban Giants, we're diving into the biggest mega project disasters you've probably never heard of. From a 105-story abandoned skyscraper in North Korea to a billion-dollar airport with no passengers, these projects were meant to be game changers. Instead, they turned into monuments of wasted money and shattered dreams. So how does a state-of-the-art airport sell for just 10,000 euro? Or why did Germany's most advanced aviation hub take nearly 30 years to open? And how did the US pour billions into a particle accelerator just to abandon it underground? Let's explore four of the most jaw-dropping mega-project flops that hardly anyone talks about. In 1987, North Korea launched an audacious plan to cement Pyongyang's status as a global powerhouse. The Ryogyong Hotel was no mere building. It was a 105-story, 330-meter or 1,080-foot behemoth designed to dwarf every hotel on Earth at the time. With a projected 3,000 rooms, five revolving restaurants atop its pyramid-like structure, and a footprint of 360,000 square meters, it was a $750 million gamble on prestige over practicality. The goal? Finished by 1989 for the World Festival of Youth and Students, a propaganda showcase of technological might. But North Korea's inexperience in high-rise construction was a fatal flaw from the start. The design, penned by local firm Bakedusen Architects, relied on a complex concrete framework, unreinforced and untested at such heights in a nation with no skyscraper expertise. Early reports suggest the concrete mix was substandard, prone to cracking under Pyongyang's harsh winters, and the lack of advanced cranes stalled progress above the 40th floor. By 1992, the Soviet Union's collapse severed North Korea's economic lifeline. Trade dried up, and the country plunged into a famine that killed hundreds of thousands. The hotel's $2 billion adjusted cost became untenable as resources shifted to survival. Construction halted, leaving a skeletal frame of 105 floors exposed, rebar rusting, concrete eroding. Structural engineers later speculated the building was unsound, elevator shafts were misaligned, and the foundation couldn't support the planned load, risking collapse if finished. For 16 years, it stood as a 330-meter embarrassment, scrubbed from maps and cloaked in silence. In 2008, Egypt's Oriscom Group intervened, cladding it in $180 million worth of reflective glass. 750,000 square meters of it to mask the decay. They also wired it for LED displays, turning it into a propaganda billboard. But inside? Nothing. No plumbing, no wiring, no floors. Just a shell. Technical audits estimate completion would cost another $2 billion, assuming the core isn't fatally compromised. After 35 years, it's the tallest unoccupied structure on Earth a monument to overreach, shoddy engineering, and an economy too fragile to sustain it. Urban Giants sees a lesson here. Ambition can't outrun physics or geopolitics. Germany's engineering pedigree, think Autobahns and BMWs, set high hopes when Berlin-Brandenburg Airport, or BER, broke ground in 2006. Planned as a 2.5 billion euro or 2.8 billion US dollar replacement for Berlin's aging Tegel and Schoenefeld airports, BER aimed to handle 30 million passengers annually across a 1,470 hectare site. Its 2011 opening promised a 33,000 square meter terminal, a 3,600 meter runway, and a fire safety system with 3,000 smoke detectors and 600 sprinklers. Urban Giants loves a slick infrastructure tale, but BER's descent into chaos is a masterclass in technical failure. The trouble started with a fire suppression system. Its 50,000 meters of piping was designed to vent smoke inward due to a software glitch, a flaw undetected until pre-opening tests. 
Fixing it required a full redesign, delayed by bureaucratic gridlock between federal and local authorities. Then came the structural blunders. The terminal's 20,000-ton roof exceeded load-bearing specs by 15%, forcing a 500 million euro rebuild of support columns. The escalators, 120 of them, were another mess. 30% were too short or misaligned with landings, a 200 million euro oversight tied to poor coordination between architects and contractors. Electrical systems fared no better. 90,000 kilometers of wiring had 550,000 defects, from short circuits to faulty grounding, uncovered in 2012 audits. Costs soared to 7.3 billion euro, or 8.1 billion US dollars, as deadlines slipped. 2012, 2014, 2017, each pushed back by fresh failures. The project's governance was a tangle. 17,000 workers across 50 firms reported to a supervisory board paralyzed by infighting. By 2020, BER opened, 14 years late, amid a pandemic that slashed demand to 9 million passengers. Its 34 million passenger capacity was already undersized for Berlin's growth, and expansion plans lag. On day one, a software glitch sent flights to the wrong terminal, a fitting coda. Urban Giants calls this a textbook flop. Overambition, fragmented oversight, and cascading technical errors turned Germany's pride into a 7 billion euro punchline. Spain's early 2000s boom, fueled by a 300 billion euro construction surge, birthed Ciolath Real Airport, a 1.1 billion euro or 1.3 billion US dollar megaproject 200 kilometers south of Madrid. Unveiled in 2009, it boasted a 4,000 meter runway, the longest in Europe, capable of landing the 600 ton Airbus A380, plus a 28,000 square meter terminal for 10 million passengers yearly. A 500 million euro high-speed rail link was planned to connect it to Madrid in 35 minutes, pitching it as a decongestant for the capital's Barajas airport, then landing 50 million passengers annually. Urban giants can see the logic here, build big, draw airlines, and profit. But the technical and economic underpinnings were shaky. The runway's length, while impressive, exceeded demand. Spain had no A380 operators, and its 300-meter width devoured budget without purpose. The terminal's design, with 12 gates and 5,000 square meters of retail, assumed passenger flows that never materialized, thanks to its remote location in Castilla-La Mancha, a region of 2 million with no tourism draw. Economic models projected 2.5 million passengers by year three, but no major airline committed. Ryanair and Air Nostrum ran a few flights before bailing. Why? Barajas, just 90 minutes away by existing rail, had slots and connectivity Ciolath Real couldn't match. The rail link never materialized, stalled by a 200 million euro funding gap. By 2012, with 450 million euro in debt and 200,000 passengers total, it shuttered, its 1,200 hectare site a ghost town. Maintenance costs hit 10,000 euro monthly, yet Spain auctioned it in 2015 for 10,000 euro, a 99.999% loss, snapped up by a Chinese consortium. It's now a plain storage lot, its 52,000 square meter apron holding grounded jets. Urban Giants pins the failure on flawed demand forecasting overbuilt infrastructure, and a location that really defied logistics. A 1 billion euro reminder that technical prowess means nothing without a market. In 1983, the US aimed to leapfrog global physics with the Superconducting Super Collider, or SSC, a $4.4 billion particle accelerator in Waxahachie, Texas. Its 87.1 kilometer, or 54 mile, oval tunnel, three times larger than CERN's 27 kilometer Large Hadron Collider, would smash protons at 40 tera electron volts, triple the LHC's power. With 10,000 superconducting magnets cooled to negative 271 degrees Celsius by 2,000 refrigerators, it promised to probe quarks, dark matter, and the Higgs boson a decade early. 
Urban Giants geeks out over the specs. A 14-foot diameter tunnel, 17 shafts, and a 200-acre campus to house 2,500 scientists. Construction began in 1991, excavating 23 kilometers of limestone at 70 meters deep, but costs exploded to $12 billion by 1993. Geological surprises like unstable clay layers demanded $1 billion in redesigns, and magnet production lagged, with only 20% of the 4-inch wide niobium titanium coils completed. But technical woes weren't the killer here. Politics were. The Department of Energy's budget doubled from overruns, but Congress, facing a $400 billion deficit, saw little voter appeal in a 54-mile science hole. Unlike NASA's tangible missions, the SSC's abstract payoff, such as a 10 to the 12th power second glimpse of the Big Bang, didn't sway lawmakers. Poor lobbying from physicists didn't help. CERN's international funding model outshone the SSC's US-only $2 billion spend by 1993. Canceled that year, it left 17 shafts and 14 miles of tunnel. Some flooded, others sealed. The LHC later claimed the Higgs in 2012, a prize the SSC could have nabbed. And here at Urban Giants, we mourn the loss. Bad geology, cost creep, and political myopia sank a machine that might have rewritten physics from Texas soil. Mega projects can forge legacies. The Panama Canal's locks still hum, the Burj Khalifa still pierces the sky, but Urban Giants has uncovered a darker side. Billions lost to technical hubris, economic missteps, and logistical nightmares. North Korea's skyscraper crumbled under shoddy concrete and a broken economy. Germany's airport drowned in wiring flops and bureaucratic bloat. Spain's runway rotted from zero demand, and America's collider died in a budget war. These aren't just flops, they're warnings. Size and cash don't guarantee success. Engineering precision and real need do. And there's more where this came from. Urban Giants wants your picks for a part two in the comments. Love this tech-heavy dive? Like, subscribe, and hit the bell for more tales of urban ambition gone wild.